Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, today we're gonna do something special. Um, as you all know, we were on the dyno the last video and uh, it made a little bit less power than I was expecting. I was hoping for at least 315, um, but we had a fuel pressure issue, which uh, accounted for some of the loss in horsepower. But I have never turned the fuel up other than just removing the fuel plate. So today we're actually gonna be doing some AFC tuning. And what I'm gonna be doing is installing a max travel spring here that's good for 60 psi and then i'm going to be shaving the afc foot and installing a home built afc control that i can control from the inside of the cab now most of you know this as afc live but uh i don't warrant spending 400 dollars on something i can build myself with some parts off of uh, the internet so here it is so we have the uh, switch, which in this mode, in the middle mode here, is valet, which meaning no air is gonna get to the AFC, which is the least amount of fuel that the truck can have. Then in the up position is gonna put the control in the uh, my needle valve and my regulator. And then in the down position is balls to the walls, all the fuel it has. Um, this consists of a pressure regulator. This is a quarter inch, uh, quarter inch uh, push lock or a shark bite push to pull whatever you call it and then this is a needle valve and then this is a three-way switch here air valve now this air valve is pretty expensive it's like 65 bucks so what we're going to do is the air from the AFC will come in here and then this switch diverts it either here or here and then from from the first switch the up position it's going to go to the needle valve which is going to control the speed of the air and then this is going to control the uh, pressure. So if you want more power, you turn it up and have all the pressure. Less power, you turn it down and you decrease the pressure. Once I get it installed and get it in the truck, we'll go over that. But first of all, before we do any of that, we need to take the AFC and we need to gut it. I got to shave some off of the foot here, put in the new spring and do some adjustments on this side here. So uh, let's get into it. All right, first off, we need to take the back housing off which they have this safety screw here. It's a tamper-proof screw, so they know back in the day, if you tampered with it, avoid your warranty. So we're gonna take a uh, little die grinder here and uh, put a notch in here so we can use a flathead screwdriver and get this thing off. Now this is the cheapest little die tool you can buy. It's like 20 bucks from Harbor Freight. So we're gonna see how it works here. All right, we're back. So that didn't go as I thought. And I just ended up having to cut those off because I could not get those to break loose. Um, it would have helped if I had a vise and an impact driver, but uh, I don't have that available to me right now. So now we can get all these loose. I recommend getting from Harbor Freight, it's called an impact screwdriver where you put it on there and you hit it with a hammer and it busts them off like an impact. That would have been very helpful, but just didn't have one with me, so. I just had to break out the big boy grinder and grind off those bolts. Thankfully, the spring kit I got from Power Driven Diesel has new Allen head bolts in it. So that's helpful. Get that out. All right, and there she is. So that's as far as we're gonna go for now. Turn that over like that right there. And this is the uh, the diaphragm. <clears throat> and this is what we're gonna change. So we're gonna change this washer, and we're gonna change out the spring on the inside, and then this foot. Take this 10 millimeter off here to get the diaphragm off, and then be able to get the spring off. Are you talking to me? Yeah. What are you talking to? Don't lose this little washer. All right, that's a washer on the inside. We're gonna be replacing that one here uh, when we get to putting the spring in there. Mom, would you toss the volleyball to me? Because that doesn't require much, it's just a tosser. Yes, it is. <clears throat> so we're gonna shave this foot off about an eighth of an inch so we can get more travel out of it. And this is gonna get us more fuel past 50% throttle, which we do not have at the moment.
So you get the foot out, you gotta take this 10 millimeter off here. What? You want to mark this here because you want to put it back in the same exact spot. You can take just a knife and scratch in the paint <clears throat> so you know where it's at. What? What are you getting for? Okay. Daddy. Well, buddy. Daddy, you put me on the shirt. I'll put you on a shirt. Pry it up like that. Do not lose this little washer either. That was behind here like that right there. Just put on your one. Set him on a shirt. That's it. Get that out there. Make sure to keep everything clean. So when you put it back together, you don't want no dirt getting everywhere. Well, mess it up. There's a shaft inside of there. Don't let it fall out because you want to keep it in there and the orientation this uh rod there slides inside of it so the spring can adjust it you couldn't see it on the okay now that the afc is disassembled we're going to take the foot here and uh, shave an eighth inch off of it all right we got the afc foot ground off uh, i just want to clean up the edges where there's no uh, debris left in there then we can go ahead and slide that back in there you want the this style of the foot going towards the back of the housing. You can take this rod, go ahead and put the rod in there, put it back in there. Slide it through the hole. Spray it off one more time. Just to be sure it's clean. Now with that in there, you take the tiny washer, put back underneath, orient it just right, and put our 10 millimeter nut back in with both washers. It's real important to have all the washers on there because uh, they had the tolerances just right, so I just want to put them back on there. And there's a lock washer to make sure everything stays tight. Tighten that sucker up. All right, there's that. Now the foot, you wanna make sure the foot moves freely. And then now we can, uh, we got a little bit of adjustment on it. Rack goes in all the way. So now we can go ahead and put our larger spring in and our washers. Some video. All right, now that we got the foot back in there, we're gonna go ahead and put the spring in. Sorry, my son's being Batman for the day. I'm gonna put the spring in there like that. Then we need to put the, the smaller spring on, the smaller washer, and then we're going to put the larger washer. Take the original washer out of the diaphragm, put it back on like that. Take the small flat washer and go ahead and thread the 10 millimeter back on. Where does what come out? Oh, that way, that way, that way. Tighten it back up there. Hey, this way. Hey, does it come out that way? Yeah, it does. All right, you don't want it super tight, but you want to. It's got to be snug. No. To where it just starts squeezing out the rubber diaphragm. So that's about just right. So we're going to clean it all off and put this, put the cap back on there. One thing you need to know is underneath this cap, the star wheel needs to go all the way to the front uh, because you have a longer spring. You need to give the spring more room to travel. And on a stock spring, you can't do that because the spring would be loose inside of there. So run that all the way forward then put this cap back on there. And then when we put this on, we can, uh, adjust the fuel screw uh, because we have a stock basically a stock fuel truck still 
I'm gonna actually add some pre-boost fuel, fuel, but if you have big injectors and big delivery valves, um, you are gonna want to uh, back the screw all the way out where you don't have any pre-boost fuel. But since I have stock injectors, stock DVs, I'm going to uh, actually add some uh, pre-boost. All right, so I got the eighth inch MPT to quarter inch uh, tubing put in there in the new uh, adjusted AFC with the new spring. And I have a new fitting right down there, if you can see it. That is the new uh, reference port that I'm gonna go to my AFC tube that I'm going to put in the cab. Now you just remove the stock AFC uh, boost reference right there and then you put in your new fitting and then that's what's gonna go into the cab. So I'm gonna slide this in real quick and then get it bolted down and then we can go to the in cab stuff. All right, so our first hose here is gonna be our feed from the head and that's gonna go in right there to that one there. And then we're gonna do the second one right here is gonna go to the bottom of the pressure gauge here. And then I'm gonna do a loop from here, teed back into that one. All just this little uh, mechanism here is temporary. This is something I built um, a few years ago and I plan on putting it somewhere else, but uh, this is what we got. So <clears throat> I'm going to mount it in the truck somewhere once I figure out <clears throat> that it's gonna work the way I want it. And then I'm going to put a, figure out a nice place to put the knobs, the switch, and then do something different with this gauge because that little $10 Home Depot gauge is just not cutting it for me. All right. So now we are ready to make some adjustments. So we have our needle valve, which is going to be fed first, which is the rate at which this, the air is moving. Then a pressure valve to determine how much pressure is actually getting to the AFC, and then our uh, valet switch. So this would be in uh, run mode, this would be valet, and this would be uh, balls of wall. So we'll see if this actually made any difference. I'm hoping that the new spring is going to work better in the AFC and uh, make it where I have a little bit more fuel than I had before. Anyways, um, thanks for watching, and then hopefully I can get a video of uh, seeing how it performs. Thanks guys. Bye.